Hi everyone, my name is Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live. Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight. Every Friday, live from East London. Today we're joined by Point Blank instructor and producer, in his own right too, Dave Stone, to look at designing drums in Serum. So today is all about sound design and drum synthesis using X for Records. Hope I'm pronouncing that properly. X for Records Serum. Uh, of course, sound design is just one of the many topics covered on our diploma courses, both here in London and online. You can find out more about those on our website, pointblankmusicschool.com. And remember, we are completely live today. So get your questions for Dave in the comments, and we'll get to them throughout the broadcast. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome back to the hot seat. Thanks a lot. Good to be back. How's it going? Not too bad, yeah. Quite busy. All good. Yeah. Excellent. So, Serum, it's quickly becoming a very popular scene. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely in drum and bass, it's uh, really popular. And I know a lot of the trance and EDM guys are using it as well. Um, and a lot of the dubstep guys as well. Yeah, so it's, um, I think it's been released for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, real popular one now, definitely. So what makes it? What makes it so good? Um, for me, it's just the actual layout and graphically it's just really well designed and there's certain things that are just really quick um, that are not so quick in other synths. Even though a lot of the stuff, you know, you can do it in other wavetable synths, but it's just really well designed basically. The interface is um, really well put together and uh, yeah, there's a couple of things about the oscillator section that are really um, quite, quite revolution revolutionary, I thought, as well. So, um, yeah. Cool. So today we're going to talk about drum synthesis mm -hmm. around sound design. Um, do you want to maybe explain like why you would want to make your own drum sounds? I mean, there's so many sample packs out there. Sure. Drums are like the, probably the most popular sample pack they collection. Are. So like, why would you want to make your own? Yeah, definitely. It's a good question. Um, the main thing, for me anyway, uh, one, you have total control over the drum sounds. So with a sample, obviously there's a lot of different ways we can manipulate them, but we're limited in, in a certain amount. And particularly with pitch, um, you know, when we start pitching samples around, even though some sample players have got really good engines, it's never going to be quite the same as pitching an actual synth drum sound around. Yeah. And also tuning the drums to the key of your track, I think, can be really important. Uh, maybe there's a lot of people out there that actually prefer to do it, you know, completely not tuned at all. But um, for me, particularly with the kick drum, if you can uh, tune it to the key of your track and the bass line, then um, yeah, it can just help it sit a lot better in the mix and just sort of work um, with the kick a lot nicer. So yeah, that's the, the kind of basic reason behind it, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Shall we dive in? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, as this is the first time that we've done um, Serum, I'm just going to do a quick um, sort of look at the uh, the main overview of Serum. So um, it's uh, an advanced wavetable synth. Um, just quickly for anybody who doesn't know about wavetable synthesis, um, you might be asking, what is a wavetable? Um, as the name entails, it's literally just a table of um, single cycle waveforms, so a table of waves. Uh, in other words, it's like a, a sequence of waveforms that we can play back and that's normally done via uh, wavetable position and control um, that we've got. So obviously um, a lot of people know this about Massive, but the great thing with Serum is that it actually shows you in real time uh, when you're sweeping the wavetable position knob, um, the point in the, uh, the table that you're at, <coughs> which is, is quite useful just to actually kind of visualize um, what you're doing. And when you click uh, here, you actually get a 3D view of that wavetable. If we just play something, So it can just actually really help to visualise what wavetable synthesis is actually doing and it can help you to be quite specific as well. And um, we're going to do a couple of videos on this, so when we look at bass uh, we're going to go a lot more in depth into this. But um, yeah, just a kind of brief overview of what that does. And there's also a really handy waveform editor as well. When you click this button uh, you can see all 256 of the um, single cycle waveforms that are inside that wavetable. And we can select them and edit them, just draw in you know, completely different um, waveforms and, and edit them in that way, um, which is really useful. Uh, you can create your own wavetables as well, which a lot of people like to do. And uh, the main thing about this section for me, again, we're going to be doing this in the base video, but you can actually load in samples and convert them into wavetables, which can be really cool. Yeah. So um, for me, sometimes I like to sample analog synths and kind of sample bass from analog synths and then convert them into a wavetable and start kind of messing with them inside Serum. So um, yeah, that's um, the kind of standout feature. So we've got two oscillators 
um, that we can use for the wavetables and a huge list of uh, available wavetables and then you know you can load your own in as well which is great uh, we've got a sub oscillator um, you know nothing fancy there but it has a really nice direct out control if you don't want that to be going to the effects or to the filter um, then that's, that's cool. yeah really useful and um, the other way um, where it really comes into its own is the noise generator because it's not only a noise generator but it's actually a sample player and uh, again you can load your own samples uh, into this as well but they've provided a really nice library of um, loads of different types of samples and for the drum design that we're going to do today uh, there's basically loads of, of really short um, slices of drums or transients inside here and uh, you can kind of use it in that way as well as like a normal noise generator as well um, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's the oscillator section. We've got one filter um, in the in the main front view here. Um, it's a pretty standard filter, but they do have loads of different types, which is really useful. And uh, again, the kind of graphics that they have, uh, you, know, you can actually see what the filter's doing in real time, which can be really useful um, as well. And there's really easy routing, just uh, by clicking down the side here, we've got oscillator A, B, the noise oscillator and then the sub as well. So again, just like really simple but effective design um, on that part. Um, where it really comes into its own also is the envelope and LFO section. Uh, down here we've got three um, traditional ADSR envelopes, um, which you know we all know what that does. Hopefully, um, you know you've just got attack, decay, sustain, release. There is a hold function as well. Um, so that's you know pretty standard. But um, here we've got in this section the option to either use an LFO or a multi-stage envelope. Uh, so right now um, we've set the motor off. If we set to um, trigger, then it's going to trigger it like an LFO. Uh, if I just assign this quickly, so just like, um, just like Massive and other synths, you just click and drag and uh, assign the modulation there. So I've just assigned it to the wavetable position. Let's just turn that off for a sec. Cool. And you know you can see in real time um, what the LFO is doing again, which is quite cool. And uh, if you set it to envelope mode, then this is now a multi-stage envelope, and we can double click and uh, just draw in as many points as we want. And there's some nice kind of keyboard um, commands as well, just to help you draw some pretty um, pretty cool shapes. And then um, yeah, it's it's quite a well-designed um, envelope generator section. So that's the main um, front panel view. Obviously, we do have like the standard controls that we get on synths, mono, legato, uh, glide, etc. Um, for the modulation, we've got the matrix. So the LFO that I just assigned, we can see that appearing now in here. Again, you know, it's it's a mod matrix. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's just really well designed. You can you can see in real time what it's actually doing, um, which is really useful. Um, the effects section again. Mostly standard effects, but the, um, the distortion is really nice because we've got a pre and post filter, um, which can be quite useful, and we're going to be using that in the bass video again. Um, there's a, a kind of hyper and dimension thing, similar to the dimension expander or massive for anyone that's used that, um, essentially just helping to kind of create um, really short delays for, for stereo width. Um, but the great thing about this section is the fact that all of the effects can just be dragged and you can uh, basically just route them however you want, um, which you know obviously you can do in a lot of other simps, but it's just really quick in here. You literally just click and drag and move them. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of basic overview, I think. Um, so I guess we'll probably move on mm -hmm. and look at the drum synthesis stuff now. Cool. So before we actually start to get into this, um, I think it's kind of important to say that with drum design, I like to think about it in three uh, main stages. Uh, normally, for me, it would be the transient, which is the initial spike at the beginning of the drum. It's normally like the snappy, punchy, uh, the first kind of hit of the drum. The second, you would say the body or the tone of the snare, um, which normally I use sine waves for, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And the third one is the kind of splash layer on the top or the tail. Um, which we normally use uh, noise for. So basically we're going to be using these oscillators um, to, uh, to, to get those three layers. So uh, I've got a couple of channels set up. First one we're going to look at is the snare. Um, I've already tuned mine uh, in here. It's just a note that I wanted to use for this particular snare, but you know the beauty of this is obviously you can tune it up and down the keyboard and get the snare at the tone that you want. So we're going to do the body first. I'm going to use the sub oscillator for this one. 
Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing with all of the oscillators is having an individual envelope to control um, the amplitude level. And uh, we're going to be doing that independently for each one. And that's how you can get like a, a different range of um, volume em envelopes going on. So I'm going to be using uh, LFO1 and we set to envelope mode. I'm going to drag it to the, uh, the amp level of the snare here, uh, sorry, of the sub. And uh, now when we hear that playing back, I'm going to drop this one down an octave. Normally when I do the body of the snare and with the kick as well, I like to have um, one uh, a lower octave and one, uh, one octave above, just to get a kind of thicker tone going on basically. Um, so this is going to be really quick and before we get the kind of combination of them all together, it's going to sound a little bit rubbish and just like a bit of a kind of ticking sound. So you've got to give it some time basically. Uh, but the second one for the body now, I'm uh, going to activate oscillator A and just going to go for the, um, the analog sine wave. Uh, normally that's the one that I seem to favour for this. Uh, before we do anything, there's a, a random phase which we need to turn off just so that the waveform is starting from the same point every time, uh, which is really important because if it's not, we're going to be getting a slight difference in the, the kind of start time and we're going to be getting different um, you know, uh, waveform start points basically. So we turn that off and uh, grab up another envelope now and I'm going to apply this to the amp level. So the same as before, using a pretty quick shape here and just making sure to always set it to envelope mode so it plays as an envelope. Cool. I'm going to fine tune this one up about 20 cents as I like to get a little bit of detuning between the two of them, just helps to thicken it out again. So that's the kind of basic body. Um, the envelope one is the uh, amp envelope for this synth, the, the kind of global envelope. So I'm going to bring up a little bit of release just to get a little bit of a tail. And uh, if we adjust these, we can start to hear them now a little bit more. Cool. So that's the kind of basic for the, uh, the body of the snare. At the moment, obviously, it just sounds a bit like a bleep, doesn't sound great, but um, when we start to look at the other oscillators, this is where it starts to take shape a bit. So this is where we're actually going to start to use wavetable. Uh, for transients, normally, I think wavetable oscillators are the best, uh, just because they're really kind of buzzy and sharp to start with. So if you want like a really sharp um, click on for your transient, then I think that wavetables are a real good um, way to go with it. Um, you can use a lot of other things. Some people like to use samples and, and really sort of cut them really finely and use that for the transient. Um, I'm going to use this one anyway. Uh, so I'm going to go for this wavetable here. And uh, I've turned off the other oscillators, so we're just going to hear this one on its own. And the same principle, basically, we're just applying a really tight envelope to, uh, to the amp of this oscillator. Uh, for this particular one, it's going to be like the tightest one possible because we want this to be literally just a, a really short tick. And I've just got to activate the envelope mode there. Cool. So at the moment, all we're hearing is a tick. You know, it's not particularly usable. Uh, but what we're going to do now is utilize another really cool feature in Serum. And that's uh, this menu down here, which is called the warp menu. Uh, essentially, this is just um, a mode to kind of manipulate the playback of the oscillators. But what it allows you to do is FM, which is really cool. Um, so you can literally just dial in, I'm saying FM from A. So it's going to take um, frequency modulation from oscillator A. And uh, you can just literally bring that up using the amount um, here, which is really handy. And when we start to use this FM, it's going to make the transient a lot kind of snappier and uh, just bring it to life a bit, basically. So to do that, we have to activate oscillator A again. when I'm bringing up the FM, we're starting to get a little bit more of a kind of tick on the beginning of the sound. Um, what I'm going to do is actually use another envelope um, just for the FM amount. Oh, and uh, it's going to be a similar shape to the... Oh, let's just flat that back down. So it's going to be a similar shape to the ones before. And uh, that's a little bit fiddly. There we go. Let's bring that down. So we're starting to get that snap on the, uh, on the transient now. So if we turn that off, just so you can hear. See, it's just making the snare a bit snappier. And the beauty of this is you can use any wavetable oscillator that you want. And when you start to move the position, 
then we get slightly different transients. Um, also just forgot there to actually deactivate the random um, amount again, so now what we can hear is like a solid transient, which is cool. So it's starting to take shape a bit. Obviously it still doesn't really sound like a snare at the moment, and uh, that's because we need to actually use the noise section uh, just to create the splash layer. So what I'm going to be looking to do with this is create like a, a hand clap sound, basically. And um, normally I find that white noise is the best to use for this. Um, as we said, the great thing is, you know, if you want to use a different, um, different sample or if, if there's a particular like analog synth which you really like the white noise on, um, which some people do, you can just create a folder in here and just load your own noise sample in, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to go for the standard um, ARP white, which is just like analog sampled white noise. And uh, if we just have a listen to this kind of on its own um, without any modulation at the moment, obviously all we're hearing is just a load of white noise with a long tail on it. And uh, if I now apply that same envelope shape that we were using for the other oscillators, still doesn't really sound like a clap at the moment, does it? It's like obvious white noise, basically. Um, but what we're going to do is draw a slightly different shape on the envelope. And uh, we're going to have like a, a really quick um, kind of ramp shape at the beginning. And uh, then we're going to have that slightly longer shape after it. Um, so it's kind of like a really quick ramp down shape and then a longer decay at the end. And uh, if we, I'm going to turn off the BPM um, sync just so we can control the rate in hertz rather than in BPM. We start to get that clap. So again, you know, if you're looking to just design clap sounds, um, this can be uh, a really good place to start. Just finding some kind of high frequency sound like white noise and uh, just applying this kind of envelope shape um, to its amplitude just gives it that kind of snappy motion which we're looking for. And uh, yeah, the beauty of this is, you know, just by dragging the rate around, we can cre create all kinds of uh, clicky, snappy sounds if we want them. For this particular one, I'm going to leave it about here right now. And just get a bit of the tail just so we can catch the, uh, the tail there for the clap. So if we start to combine these now, starting to take shape a little bit. And one thing I would say about this whole process is it's a constant kind of trial and error, going back and just adjusting each individual oscillator until you get the kind of um, transient you're looking for or the tail that you're looking for. Um, but essentially, this is um, this is how it starts anyway. So what I'm going to do is kind of leave that there for now. Um, we could, you know, sit there for ages and kind of go and really select through the transients um, that we've got on the wavetable oscillator, but I'm going to leave that. And the next thing I'm going to do is activate the filter and route all of these oscillators to that filter. I'm uh, going to go for a high pass on this one. And what I'm going to look to do is um, <clears throat> use an envelope on this uh, that I'm just assigning here. And we're going to look to create a really quick um, kind of filter sweep. And what it's going to do is just uh, cut out some of the unwanted uh, low end that we've got going on at the moment, because we don't want too much of that going on. And especially when we start to process this in a bit, we're going to hear um, a lot of unwanted low end. So this, um, this filter envelope can really help with that. So I'm just uh, designing the shape for it here. And it's going to be, again, a really quick envelope. And if we have a look at this now, takes a little bit of time to get it right. Cool. Uh, in fact, I've got a low pass selected. That was why I was sounding weird. <laughs> <laughs> cool. OK. As you can see, there is a lot to kind of remember with this uh, process. And yeah. Cool. OK. So that was what I was looking for anyway, is this, um, this shape where you can see it just really quickly kind of catching the, um, the hit. And if we turn that off now, you can hear there's a bit more sort of rumbly low end. And uh, if we cool. 
difficult. So I'll leave that. Oh, you can see there's a really fine line with it, basically. But that's what we're looking for anyway. Um, so in the, the kind of main section with the oscillators and the filter, um, that's what we're looking to do. Um, where it starts to take shape even more is when we start to apply some effects. So we're going to go for um, the dimension, just to add a little bit of stereo width to this. For me, I don't like to have too much stereo information in the snares, so um, if we have a listen to what this is doing, you can hear when we really turn it up, it gets you know, unusable, but a little bit of this can just help to add some kind of stereo width to the snare and uh, particularly in the higher layers can be quite nice. Really subtle. Um, next thing we're going to do is apply a little bit of the tube distortion. I'm not actually going to use the, uh, the filter inside there at all for this one. Just to kind of fatten up the sound a little bit. Um, but where it really starts now to actually take shape is on the multiband compressor. Um, this is a really um, quite uh, powerful multiband com compressor. It's quite aggressive, um, so when I start to bring the gain up, it's going to really, really kind of rag the sound. So I'm going to bring the master out down. If we turn it to multiband mode, you can hear that it's um, kind of really aggressively affecting that snare and just really sort of bringing the transient and the tail out, which is what we're looking to do. Uh, normally at this point I find that it's exaggerating the high frequencies a bit too much. So what I'm doing here is just adjusting the high band and just kind of bringing it down a little bit. Uh, what we can also hear is it's started to exaggerate the tail a lot now. And um, although I want a bit of a tail on this snare, I don't want it to be too long. So on the overall amp envelope, which is envelope one, I'm just bringing down the release a little bit so we get it. Cool. So you can hear it's, it's starting to take shape now. Um, what we can also do is add an EQ after that. And uh, I'm just going to select the bell shape here. And uh, because I know that I've tuned this snare um, earlier on, I'm going to set it to 300 hertz and just apply a bit of a boost just to get that fundamental frequency of the snare ringing out a little bit more. Cool. So from here, you know, it's just a case of going back in. If you think maybe the snare's a bit too snappy, um, you can always just use the uh, amp level control just by clicking and dragging just to adjust. So let's say, you know, maybe we thought that the transient was a bit too much. You can just bring it down or you know, maybe the clap layer is a bit too much. We can just bring it down on the individual level. Cool, um, so that's the snare drum. Um, probably gonna leave that there for the snare drum because I wanna move on to the kick as well, but this is the basic principle behind it anyway. Um, it's really important to mention that this is only really the first stage in the process and I'll always be processing these hits a lot with um, transient shapers, multiband compression, limiter, um, EQ. Uh, but just as like a brief um, example here, I've got uh, Isotope Alloy uh, loaded up. It's actually um, at the moment just got uh, the transient shaper on there and uh, we've got Pro-Q um, there as well. Uh, so you can hear the difference. Turn the output of the snare down a bit. Just boost this up. You can hear it's just making it a little bit punchier. Um, but yeah, the point being that you know I'll normally go in with um, a lot of processing after this. But the point of today, hopefully, is just to show you guys like the basic concept behind it, and uh, we can always maybe do another video on like the actual processing yeah. of the drums. And obviously on the on the courses as well. I mean, that's definitely, what yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the snare drum. I'm uh, going to move on to the kick now. Uh, so I've got my kick. I've plotted in the piano roll uh, just some notes in G. As I know, um, a lot of the time uh, in drum and bass, we do tend to um, tune our tracks to G, or uh, F is another popular one. So you know, point being, whatever key your tracks in, uh, normally I would put the um, 
the pitch of the kick down there, so we've got that on G. Uh, it's going to be a similar process with this one, um, but before we start, I'm going to go into the modulation matrix and I'm going to say that envelope 2 is going to be a global pitch envelope, so the master tuning of the whole um, synth we're going to set to uh, 12, which is 12 semitones, and then what we're going to hear is just the classic uh, pitch envelope effect. So already we're just getting a, a slight kind of punch to the sound before we've really started to do anything. And on the amp envelope, just going to give it a bit of release just so we've got a bit of a tail going on basically. Cool. And then the process is exactly the same, just using the envelopes on all of the individual uh, amp levels just so you've got maximum control on each individual one. So we've got this on the amp level for the sub again. Going to leave it somewhere around there for now, although I'll probably come back in and redesign it in a bit. Um, so the second part of the body now we're doing, going to put this one up one octave, and going to fine tune it ever so slightly just to kind of thicken out the sound again. And again, just select a nice analog sine wave. And same thing, just applying envelope to the level, getting this shape on the go, and just always remembering to activate the envelope mode, otherwise we'll be hearing it as an LFO. So it's just a case of mixing these two together and just getting the right balance. You can hear when it's up around the top, it starts to become a little bit too kind of hollow sounding. I think for now, I'll probably leave that there. Uh, so that's all, um, all we're going to do for the body in this section. Uh, same thing again now for the transient. Uh, just going to grab up the first. Um, wavetable oscillator that we've got here and we're going to do the same process again just creating that really really quick envelope just to get the really kind of spiky transient uh, so we've got that on the level now and again I'm going to use the uh, FM from oscillator A and uh, just put a little envelope on that FM amount as well just to get that really sort of punching through so got that here and uh, remember to turn the random off. As you can see, if you forget to um, set it to envelope mode, then the whole thing goes to pieces, basically, and you're uh, not really hearing what you want to hear. So we're starting to get that transient on the top of the kick now. You know, depending on what you want, if you want a little bit more subtle one, you could maybe sort of leave the FM around here. Um, definitely for anyone that's wanting to use this for kind of house and techno, um, for me anyway, the drums should be a lot softer in that style of music. So, you know, you might want to not go so heavy on the transients um, there. But, you know, obviously we're looking to create some uh, D&B style drums here. So, yeah, going to leave it about there. See, we can sweep through this uh, wavetable. But for now, I'm going to leave it somewhere around there. So the final thing now is the noise layer again, and um, this is something I think that a lot of people again like to do um, differently each time. Uh, for me, I normally like to have some kind of um, white noise layer going on that's a bit kind of softer, and I, it can um, help to kind of counteract the sharpness of the transient sometimes and just help to mimic a real kick drum um, a little bit more. So I'm going to apply again just the amp envelope to that white noise and uh, just bring the shape down. And we're going to mix in a little bit of noise into this sound now. Not too much. Something like this for now. Cool. You can hear it just, it's really subtle, but it just sort of softens the kick a little bit more and kind of just works with the transient a bit. 
Um, again, you know, you don't have to do this, you could leave it off. Um, the other thing I'm going to demo here quickly is the fact that in this list we've got kick attacks, which are basically just um, small slices of transients from kicks. So if you wanted to um, make a really, really punchy kick drum, you can literally just use one of these and kind of layer it over the top. We have to be really tight with the envelopes on these ones. There we go. If we bring this up a bit, you can hear that we're starting to get a real click on the top of there now. And they've got a big library of transients that you can just sweep through. For me personally, it's um, a little bit, a little bit too much. So. I, I don't really feel that I need that many highs in my kick drum, so I'm just going to go back to the uh, white noise there and just set up what I had. Cool. And then the final thing again, just like with the snare, going to route all of these oscillators to the uh, high pass filter, making sure to set it on high pass this time, and applying the same kind of envelope with that real quick shape, just so it's scooping out a little bit of that unwanted low end, because particularly in the kick, it's going to start to get really boomy. Cool. So leave that there for now. Maybe give a bit of drive on the filter, just to fan it up a bit. Cool. And the same thing in the effects now. I'm not going to apply any of the uh, dimension, because I don't really want my kick to be um, particularly stereo, but we do want to kind of warm it up a little bit with the tube. And again, you know, if you want to create really driven kick drums, you can really drive it up. And personally, I don't want to have too much on there. So I'm going to leave it about there for now. And uh, again, multiband compressor. And this is obviously going to really change the sound again. Cool. It's really bringing out that drive. So I'm just kind of backing it down. And yeah, like I said, the whole thing is just a constant trial and error. Like adding the next plug in, it brings out the tail a bit too much. It brings out the mm. transient. You go back in and, you know, until you get the, uh, the sound you're looking for, basically. So it's sounding a bit boomy at the moment. But it's not too bad. Uh, so I'm going to add the EQ here on the end, and this time I'm going to say that I actually want to roll off um, 30 hertz and below, uh, just because we really don't need that. Uh, a lot of the time in production I'm always trying to um, roll off 30 hertz because we just don't really need it too much. And I'm going to just back off the highs a little bit there. So it's starting to madly clip on the channel there, so I'm just going to bring it down a bit. Cool. So that's the, the basic principle um, behind the kick drum. Obviously, they're, they're pretty similar, but the snare normally it will have a much kind of splashier layer over the top. Uh, how are we doing for time? OK, cool. So because, as I said, this process takes ages to get right, I've prepared um, a couple of examples um, that I did before just to hear um, what they kind of sound like on their own. So if we just preview the kick and the snare first. So these were the ones that I set up before. And I've also got a hat running out of serum here again and this time just using one of the um, inharmonics which are just some of the other samples that are available just to create a hi-hat. So it's literally just, just uh, essentially just white noise. I haven't even applied an envelope to the amp uh, onto the individual amp on this one. Just using one envelope. Uh, so yeah, that's the three of those. And what I'm going to do now is just turn on um, all of the processing that I have. I've got them also <coughs> going to a drum bus as well. So this is the individual layers. So at the moment, they just sound like synthetic drums. There's no real character to them at all, mm -hmm. but they're very usable. We can pitch them to you know wherever we want, and they are going to punch through um, nice and kind of heavy in a mix. 
Um, but for me, there's always got to be some kind of element of funk inside um, creating drums. You know, I I'll never create drums from just synthetic drum layers. Um, I think personally for DMB, um, that's a, a good way to go. Um, I think if there's a lot of guys out there that are into um, EDM and that kind of style, you can probably create most of your drums you know, using this process. Um, but for me, there's always got to be some funk anyway. So I've got Contact Studio Drummer loaded up and I've got a break um, that I made on here. What I've done inside um, Studio Drummer is to really reduce a lot of the transients because I didn't want it to conflict with these layers at all. I'm literally just trying to get the, the kind of acoustic um, drum sound and just get some character going on. So if we listen to how these sounds combined now. If we just mute that. Obviously all the funk is immediately gone as soon as you take that out and it just sounds like obvious electronic drum hits. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, you know, these are running for a lot of um, processing. We can briefly have a look at what's going on uh, on the drum bus now. Um, so yeah, we're using um, isotope alloy and one of my favorites here, um, kind of free drive plugins, which is Air Windows Density. It's a kind of analog drive um, saturation kind of emulator. Nice interface. Yeah, really nice, simple, you <laughs> know, just, just, style, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just four, four controls. Um, but if we, we can have a listen to how much we can rag the drum bus of this if we want to, um, if it wants to load up. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> you know, if we really want to distort the drums, we can go that way. But the great thing is, it's got dry wet control, so you can just mix in a little bit of that really aggressive distortion. And it's just got a nice kind of an analog and um, fat sound to it. So yeah, I've got the alloy in there as well, uh, just using Transient Shaper and Exciter. And there is already a really good point blank tutorial by Icicle about how to use the um, isotope alloy um, to kind of push up transients. So I'm not going to go too much into it. And then just got a limiter on there um, on the end as well. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of basics behind it. Don't know if we, how we're doing for time right now. Yeah, we're cool. We've got yeah. some questions coming in. Cool, okay. Uh, Apoplexia says that break really changes everything. It really does, yeah, yeah definitely. It really um, does. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Uh, Apoplexy again. Yeah. He's loving it. Uh, to adjust the band with the multi band uh, compressor, you just drag them around. Is that yeah. the threshold? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so we've got on here. Let's have a look at that, how that works. Essentially, we've got one kind of overall gain control for it, yeah. and then three uh, bands here that we can just click and drag. And you can see it's got M for mid band there, and we can just click and drag it around. So, you know, if we wanted on, let's say, on the kick to really boost up the lows. Uh, rather than using an EQ, sometimes it can be really nice just to kind of smash it out on the multiband compressor there. See this one's sounding a little bit distorted at the moment, but yeah, that's um, that's how you adjust the multiband compressor. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, sound effects 68 is a kind of harking back to what we were saying at the start. Of what's the benefit of spending ages on percussion when you could use samples? Okay, um, so yeah, hopefully we explained that before, but it's just having this control. So, you know, if, um, if let's say I wanted to pitch this uh, particular snare down uh, quite a few uh, notes, let's say, you know, down here, if we were using a sample for this, um, we could, you know, there's some samplers out there with, built with really great algorithms that do handle pitch um, changes quite well, but it will never be exactly the same as if you were um, kind of pitching it real time in a synth. So for me, that's the main thing. And then just this individual control that we've got, um, obviously what we've seen is it's really fiddly. There's a lot of different envelopes involved. But having that control means you know you can design whatever drum sound you want um, theoretically. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's worth pointing out as well that sometimes you might want that degradation a sampler brings to the sound. Definitely, well, yeah. yep, definitely. So, so it's not dismissing it. It's just definitely not option. dismissing it. No, that's a really good point. So I'm I'm doing this from my kind of drum and bass heavily processed, um, heavily sort of tight production thing. But sometimes you want to kind of pitch samples down for drums and make them sound uh, completely different. So yeah, it's just basically for getting a sort of modern punchy drum sound for this kind of music. That's 
the reason why I would do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, time for one more from Dry Desert, cool. who's uh, giving you a bit of a challenge. What kind oh, of yeah. drum sounds would Dave think are not easy to make with a synth? <laughs> Are there any? Um, well, obviously with a synth, we're just li uh, limited to oscillators. So we're, we're limited to the tones that blatantly play out of the synth. So we can only really make these electronic drum sounds. And you know, when we solo them, you can still hear that that's a sine wave. You can still hear it in the background. So you, know, you can't really get any away from that at all. And it's yeah. only by using the real drum sounds. And again, you know, we go in, really go in with the design on things like Studio Drummer with the envelopes again. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Not sure. Yeah, so it's, it's always quite tonal, I guess. Has yeah, be yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's always going to be tonal. And it's just, uh, just making it kind of punch through at the fundamental frequency. That's the idea anyway. Absolutely. Cool. Nice one. So that is it for today's cool. FFL. Uh, if you're keen to learn loads more about sound design, mixing, composition, and all that good stuff, make sure you check out our diploma courses at pointblankmusicschool.com. We'll be back soon with another FFL, so we'll see you then. Cheers.